We're joined uh, now by uh, Bridget Quilligan from the Irish Traveller Movement, Susan Fay, solicitor, and uh, Carl Coulter from the Childcare Law Reporting Project. Um, what do you make of this uh, of, of this story about the Roma children being removed from their parents? Well, Vincent, it's absolutely disgusting. Um, as a traveller woman, the whole way through this story, I suppose, I was fearing that this would be the outcome, that pe children would be ripped from their parents for absolutely no reason other than prejudice, discrimination and racism. And we, the parents, I think, and the Roma and traveller communities have been vindicated by the, res the DNA results. However, the, the headlines in the papers are absolutely heartbreaking. How would you feel if your child was taken? The girl starved herself to death, or starved herself for three days. They're considerably different headlines than were over the past few days on, in the media and on social networking sites where people were basically already convicting the people by media. So the people were subjected, these families were subjected to trial by media all along. There are serious questions in terms of the role of the Gardaí and the HSC in this and why they acted without investigating properly and why they applied maybe a different standard and duty of care to this child than they would to another child. It seems that the child, the family were investigated purely on a whim, purely on a phone call, whipped up by hysteria surrounding the case in Greece and based purely on the child being a blonde, blue-eyed blue child. And that is extremely concerning. When you look at all the persecution that the Roma community have suffered over the last several hundred years, and particularly um, in terms of the Holocaust, and to see again the, the, the tide of hatred and anti-Roma propaganda that's in the media in Central Europe and in Eastern Europe, and now to see this in Ireland, mm. it is truly shocking. It's interesting you make the point about the Holocaust because the Roma people were also victims Absolutely. of the Holocaust, along with uh, Jew, the Jews, of course, and uh, gay people and, yes. uh, and others. Um, Susan, how was this legal? Um, that, as I understand it, the law is that only when there is an immediate risk to the welfare of a child may the child be removed from their home. And there's no evidence that there was an immediate risk to the children that were taken from their homes. Well, Vincent, just in relation to that, the only evidence that's in the public domain at the minute is the result of um, the media reporting on the matter. Uh, this case was held in camera, which means it was held in private. So the full facts aren't available to us. Um, however, we would have serious concerns around this um, as to what evidence was relied upon in exercising the guard the powers under Section 12 of the Child Care Act 1991. And we will be calling for a full investigation, independent review of what happened. We note that the Minister this evening um, indicated that he's going to ask the guard commissioner to provide a report. We would say this does not go anywhere near far enough. There needs to be a full independent review, independent of both the Gardaí and the HSC, investigating this matter, looking at the evidence that the Gardaí relied upon in exercising their power under Section 12, then looking at the contact between the Gardaí and the HSC in this case, and then looking more broadly at the exercise of Section 12 powers so that this doesn't happen again and to ensure that families sitting at home watching this tonight aren't paranoid about their children being taken uh, from them. And of course, one of the serious concerns that we have in the Irish Traveller movement and in other organisations is that there was racial profiling. And this is not new information to the government. Uh, the European Commission on Racism and Intolerance this, uh, in February of this year published a report identifying that racial profiling was reported to them to exist and calling on the government to introduce legislation relating to racial profiling. So there are grave concerns around that and we will be calling for, as I said, a full review and an analysis of the potential as to whether or not racial profiling was used by the Gardaí and the HSC in this particular case. I mean, we would have concerns that this was trial by ethnicity. Um, another issue... Okay, can I just go to Carl? Yes. Uh, Carl, uh, it seems to me that there was not a legal basis for the children to be removed from the, those homes. No, there was not a serious and immediate risk as far as we know. I mean, I do want to emphasise that we, uh, we have information that came to the media and I think we also need to look at the process whereby it came. I was very concerned that you had crime reporters 
reporting on this case, not child protection reporters, not the people who normally write about child protection and child welfare. Now, with respect to the very excellent journalists who were writing about this case, where did the story come from? Where did the details come from that had ended up in the hands of Of course they came from the Guardi. They, and, and, if, and if there was any question of there being an immediate risk to the child, they would have leaked it by now. So yes. we can yeah. reasonably assume yeah. that since their PR agents said nothing about it, um, that they there was no suspicion that the ch children were at immediate risk, which, which suggests and not only this was that, illegal. Yeah, and not only that, Vincent, if there was a risk in that family, why were the remaining children left there? I mean, if, if, there, was some, exactly. if there was a problem excellent with the family. Excellent point, excellent yeah. point. Um, and it, it wouldn't just be illegal, it would be a crime. It's a crime. It's the, the children, if, if what we assume were the facts, these children were abducted. That's a crime. And the people who, who uh, did this are guilty of crime and they should be prosecuted. I think it's important that balance be exercised. I mean, obviously, balance between child, what and what? Well, there are child protection concerns and then there's the issue of racial profiling as well. I mean, there are legitimate child protection concerns and that's what the, the government or the, the, the minister... In this concerns. particular instance, I don't believe that there were any. So but in the exercise... Thing. Well, in, in exercising their powers under the child care legislation, the, the Gardaí and the HSE should exercise balance in looking at the facts and ensuring that there is an sufficient evidence to bring an application. And, and, and that would, the evidence would have to support a belief that the, ch the children were at immediate yeah. risk. Yeah. And now, you can be sure that the Gardaí, as they leaked other things in regard to this, would have leaked that if that were a factor. And as Carl says, and if the child was at immediate risk, the other children would have had to be removed from the homes. Yeah, Vincent, can I say that this smacks an awful lot of what uh, the traveller community went through, probably for over 60 or 70 years, up until recently, with the whole childcare scandal, and some would argue are still even going through, where children were removed from the care of their parents because they were living in wagons or in tents at the side of the road. And people would come, the cruelty man in particular, if you, if you mention him, I don't know if he's familiar oh, yes. with any of the awesome, panellists. Yeah. But if you mention that even to people of my mother's generation today, they will shiver. Because he put the absolute fear of God into people, where children were snatched from their mother's arms and taken and put into care, into God knows what awful circumstances. And it's only starting to emerge now. There's a whole area of traveller history that needs to emerge around that, that needs to be recorded and needs to come to light. There's a whole scandal there about how our children were yeah. removed and put into care. And this the same relationship in terms of with the guards, this all needs to be clarified so this do, what happened yeah. to us in the past doesn't happen to other minorities. Yeah. You'd have to sorry Car no, 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 I, I mean I think the issues that arise in this case, and by the way, you know, th these are wider issues as well in the whole child protection system, is what are the thresholds which justify children? being taken, uh, taken into care at all or any other kind of intervention. The emergency care order procedure is, is just one procedure. That's the section 12 one. Now, that one, of the, you know, one of the good things about that is it goes very, very quickly to court. You know, it but in this has instance, to go. you were saying that it didn't go to court. Well, in, uh, no, it did go to court. There's been a hearing for the last two days in Dublin District Court but, in relation to this was case. Was a protection order issued? No. No, the, the process is that it starts with the guards taking a child to a, a place of safety if they feel the child is in danger. Now, of course, the issue is why did they think this child was in danger? And that's an issue where we certainly need to have a proper investigation as to why they thought the child was in danger. But then the next well. step is that the HSE goes to court to get an emergency care order, which can only last for eight days. In this case, they didn't get an emergency care order. Actually, in a second case in the Midlands, they didn't even reach that point because an investigation was carried out, DNA tests were done, and the child was returned to the family. Again, I only know from media reports, but as far as we understand, it didn't even get to that stage. But the courts do supervise this. The courts do also sometimes refuse emergency but they didn't care supervise orders. supervise it in, this, in these instances. Well, no, I mean, it hadn't got to yes. the point of a final decision. Yeah. That, and that, the, that is the point. In so far as we understand the situation, these children were abducted without any legal basis taken out of their families. And that's a crime. And will, the question is, will the people who did this and who ordered this or are complicit in this be prosecuted? Well, I think we have to, you know, we can't make a statement of that nature till we know exactly what the evidence I'm, I'm was. I'm saying the on the basis of, of what we know, 
you can't make that statement. It, that if the, what we know is the case, and then it seems prima facie a crime was committed in removing those children. And yeah. well, I you know, certainly would uh, feel like that. I imagine the, to the child and to her family, a child being taken from her family, maybe not knowing the language, I don't know the detail, proper details of the case, but a family who might, English mightn't be their first language, a child being snatched from a family put into surroundings where she knew nobody and starved herself for three days, certainly I would think that it's maxed to me of an abduction and it's maxed to me of a crime. As, and that, I'm speaking as a traveller woman, that if it was done to someone in my own community, I would have as much uproar as I feel this minute for this family. And, but if you look at the general Irish population, there's an awful lot of support for the family, but there's an awful lot of people out there saying that these families, if this is what, if this perpetrates every stereotype about the Roma community. In your opinion, is there a prejudice among the godless you call it towards travellers and Roma Absolutely, people? Absolutely, Vincent. Absolutely. As a traveller woman, I would stand over that 100%. You can't say every guard is like that. I have come across some absolutely wonderful guardy in my time. But for the most part, our experience is one of being racially profiled. And the ECRI report and the recommendations from the ECRI report. What was the ECRI report? The, um, the European Commission for Elimination of Racism. They made a report and recommendations in February of this year to say that the Gardaí were practising racial profiling. Now, the Gardaí disputed that. However, anybody from a minority group, whether you're from a traveller background, a Roma background, an African background, you will know that we are racially profiled, we are pulled over, we are stopped and searched, we are questioned, we are treated differently. There's no doubt about that. There's absolutely no doubt about that. They recommended that the Irish government would legislate against this and that the Gardaí would legislate against this. OK, we're going to take a break and after the break we'll go to your texts and tweets and we'll continue our review of tomorrow morning's newspapers. Join us then.